So these bricks are kind of the big you know, things that I've been working on. I should probably just have the preview here so I don't get lost in the weeds of the bricks. But yeah, also kind of just using reference. I always use references, so here's the general references I use. A majority of my start came from finding this temple. I believe this is an Indian temple. And I was kind of just struggling to find interesting looking backgrounds and, you know, temple rooms and things like that that I could, you know, that entices my imagination. Backgrounds is harder for me because, well, they're backgrounds or places. They're basically just dead. I don't like, I guess, dead things. I think generally most people like living people, you know, actual places to interact with and talk with. That's most artists' bad spot is backgrounds. Because, you know, it's very technical. You gotta know perspective and rough architecture, interior design. It's a lot of disciplines. Like, being a background artist is a skill in itself. And, obviously, you know, they get paid the big bucks for that. And, you know, as a comic book artist, you probably are required to draw all that, plus, plus character designs, plus tell a story, plus you gotta be able to belt that shit out in, like, a month or so, belting out maybe, like, 22 pages a month. Honestly... I don't even care to do those deadlines anymore. Especially since you're basically doing your own self-promotion now. That, I mean, a 22-page uh, deadline sounds doable if I was only penciling. If I still need to ink my art, that still fillets. Like, I don't want to be inking my art while I'm penciling, while I'm storyboarding. That's kind of just one of those things that is difficult about, I'd say, comic book art. Because when I was working on comic book art, it was... It took me roughly six years to make my first book. And that was Shirley's Day. Because Shirley's Day took me like five years to complete. Because I think it took me three years to draw the first six pages. And another year and a half to struggle with the digital art because I wasn't as good with the uh, Clip Studio Paint as I want. In fact, I still feel like I'm lacking in Clip Studio Paint. But yeah, back then I was trying to figure out how the heck to even do digital art. When I initially did the digital inking, people could tell that I was killing off my pencil lines and yeah, I didn't want to do that, so I decided to just ink it by hand because I was a little bit more experienced with inking. I did Inktober back in, in 2017, and you know, that significantly boosted my inking. So you know, if you're doing Inktober this year, you know, I, I I recommend it. I think these days I probably wouldn't because. I think in the time it takes me to do Inktober, I could be inking my own books, but that's neither here nor there. You know, it does help, like, being able to have, being able to just make the time just practice on a tool that you don't use. Practice on a tool that you don't use often will boost your proficiency with it. I wanted to do that for a watercolor, but I'm constantly doing digital art right now to kind of just do all that some other time so that's neither here nor there 